Hi there, my name is Stein van Weyck and I'm a disciple of Jesus Christ. I'd like to talk to you about uh, the cross. Um, the cross is something that uh, I guess I discovered only later in my life. Uh, although I went to church and had a Bible and, you know, and went to church classes uh, as a young man, uh, I didn't understand the cross. In, in fact, I was about 24 years old, 23, and I, I said to my wife, uh, you know, let, let's let's go to church. And when I talk about the cross, I'm like, what is it all about the cross? You know, this Jesus and the cross thing. Um, I don't really get it. And I, and I, and I think it's probably just a lot to do with myself and the fact that I just didn't listen when I was spoken. But, um, you know, luckily at that point, I it came around to me. So I want to read you one of my favorite passages in the Bible and, uh, um, and uh, just share this with you. It's really great. I'm going to read in 1 Corinthians 1 verse 18 and then I'll, and then I'll tell you my story. Uh, so it reads there, it says, For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved it is the power of God. For, the, for it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, the intelligence of the intelligent I will frustrate. Where is the wise man? Where is the scholar? Where is the philosopher of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world through its wisdom did not know him. God was pleased through the foolishness of what was preached to save those who believe. Jews demand miraculous signs and Greeks look for wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to the Jews and foolishness to the Gentiles. But to those whom God has called both Jews and Greek, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than man's wisdom and the weakness of God is stronger than man's strength. Brothers, think of what you were called. Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many of you were influential. Not many were of noble birth, but God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. God chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. He chose the lowly things of the world and the despised things and the things that are not to nullify the things that are, so that no one may boast before him. It is because of him that you are in Christ Jesus, who has become for us wisdom from God. This is our righteousness, holiness, redemption. Therefore, as it is written, let him who boasts, boasts in the Lord. So I want to talk about why we do the things we do. What motivates us to become um, scientists and teachers and what motivates us to be Christians or, or even to marry? You know, you know, why are we motivated? Maybe a good example is to use the example of, of a marriage, why we are married. And also talking about a marriage is what makes us persevere when we are married. And I'm, I, I'm married now for over 25 years. And, uh, and you can't stay married for 25 years if there's really a deeper motivation. And, uh, and even I cannot stay 25 years if there's no deeper motivation to do that. And everything we do, we have motivation. If our motivations are not really right it just doesn't last and and you see that with the with the children that go to sport and they and they're not motivated and they leave it and people that make decisions but they don't persevere in it because their motivation is shallow and there's not enough to to uh, keep them going you know and looking at marriages you know you, you see you see how marriages today just don't last you know it's just so evident there's there's just a lack of power in the marriage there's a lack of motivation in the marriage, although marriage partners are, are wealthy, they they divorce. Or although they are wise and they have qualifications, they divorce. Although they might be popular, they divorce. Although maybe they are physically very attractive, they've got nice bodies uh, and do lots of gymming, they still divorce. And all those things that that we sometimes think are motivation for, oh, I like that girl because she looks good and she's got a body, or I like that guy because he's got great qualification. Those things just don't keep the marriage together. So there's something else and deeper than needed here that will keep that marriage together. And, and in my life as well, 
So, um, I never hear of a couple that says um, when they get married, um, they they have some form of a contract ar around these things. You don't get married and you say, "Well, honey, I'm gonna we're gonna have a kids agreement in our marriage." And if if you fail on the kids agreement, then we, then you know our contract is null and void. Marriage is not supposed to be that. Marriage is not supposed to say, "Okay, we have a disease agreement in our marriage." Now, if you start walking cripple or or if you can't hear me anymore, well, then it's over. You know that then we terminate the agreement of the marriage. Marriage is not made that way, and relationships are not supposed to be like that at all. So, and and this all comes down to motivation. We have to write have the right motivation uh, for what we do. So a little bit of the things of it that motivate me. I'm going to give you a little bit of background about what motivate me. I joined the South African Police Force when I was seven years old and I looked for uh, freedom for my parents and adventure and uh, that was my motivation for joining the South African Police Force but that weared off and it didn't last and I ended up leaving the Police Force after five years. Later on I became a sound engineer and I started traveling Africa with some big bands uh, and, and long hair and young but that also didn't last. The motivation was that the music was great, but the motivation wasn't deep enough. I just did not persist in, in, that, in that career or in that lifestyle. And so many other things that I've just not persevered in because I just lacked motivation. And in the same way for me as a, as a disciple of Jesus Christ, I somehow need to find motivation to be a disciple and stay a disciple. First of all, a lot of this... Being a Christian is not also physical. It's not like Jesus standing next to me. It's not like, like I, uh, he makes me a sandwich in the morning and and uh, you know and we go for a jog and we're friends like that. So I need to somehow take my relationship with with God and Jesus to a spiritual level where it's different. The bottom line is I need some form of wisdom, some form of power that is really beyond just our human power. And I think initially when I started out looking for Christianity, I was looking for the wrong things in Christianity. Um, first of all, I, I was all kind of intrigued with human wisdom and I looked at things like evolution and science and, and I really liked the wisdom things. And uh, I ended up being drawn to Christianity because of its wisdom, because I feel I looked at the Bible and I thought, oh, there's a lot of wisdom in it. And I ended up spending a lot of time in books like Ecclesiastes and, and uh, 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 Proverbs and just reading all these wise things and thinking that these things are really good for me as, as a person. The bottom line is I never changed because of spending time, hours in Ecclesiastes or Proverbs. It did not change me. I did not receive the power that made me a Christian and, and kept me faithful. It did not work. I think in the same way, if you are looking for Christianity that, that is mystic and full of miracles and, and all those kind of stuff, you, you're going to end up spending time in revelations and you're going to, going to hang out at all these uh, so-called mystic meetings. But these things is not going to last also. And kind of both these things compare with the scriptures that I've just read before, where it talks about how Greek look for wisdom and how the Pharisees were looking for miraculous signs and that they didn't find that in, in the gospel and the message from God. In other words, they turned their backs on the gospel because they didn't find it. In the same way, I turned my back on the gospel because I didn't really, that motivation of being wise did not help and the same for you could be for the mystic christianity it's not going to keep you on the road for too long you're going to fall back into sin and you're going to wonder why i've been exposed to this amazing miracles and look at my life i'm back into sin it's because you did not tap into god's power so i've got to talk a little bit about how my how motivation came about in my life and it really went went were right when I started studying out the Bible and I had my friend over at my house, I was, uh, we were looking at sin and uh, really studied out what does sin look like and, 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 I, and I compared it in my life and I basically ticked down how my life compared to all these sin scriptures in the Bible and I was just first of all blown away. I, I just had to see, man, I am very sinful and I did not struggle to see myself as a sinner at the end 
of of all these scriptures that are found about sin in the Bible. You know, and I, I was in in school already. I was a young rebel. I was a vandalist, broke windows. I was ruthless. I was arrogant. I was aggressive. I was greedy for money. Um, uh, and then I joined the police force. And in the police force, I was violent. I was arrogant, immoral. I thought I'm better than other people. And then later on, even in my marriage, after I married, I was just a selfish husband, just focusing on myself. I was unloving. I was unforgiving. Uh, I was impatient. There was just a lot of wrong with me. And looking at that, I just saw, well, you know, I had to come to terms with, yes, I'm really sinful. And then we started looking at the cross after, you know, after I looked at my sin, we started looking at the cross and the cross was explaining how all these different characters came to the to the cross uh, there was the soldiers and there was the rulers uh, um, uh, and there was um, the bystanders and there was his disciples that fled and I, and I started identifying with these characters around the cross and realized that I'm actually just like them in some way all of these characters have elements of me in them you know I'm violent like the soldiers I'm a hippo I'm afraid like the the bystanders that wouldn't take a standpoint against what is right and wrong. I'm like the disciples, a religious guy that runs away. I just saw myself all over in, in that cross. I saw myself at that day, at that day, at the cross. And uh, I think then, then it struck home. You know, As soon as I started identifying with the people that crucified Jesus, it really started cutting me deep. And, and very deep, so deep that I got my motivation from the power of, of God, which is love, uh, which kind of mm, helps me to live a bold life today. I'm, you know, I, am, I really don't care anymore what people think of me. Not, not that I want to be irresponsible about it, but I am all committed for what I believe in because my motivation is really deep. So the thing is there that I realized that I didn't earn anything, but my best friend, which which is Jesus, at that time, I didn't even know him. At that time, he gave his life for me, and he gave me a second chance. And he said to me, Stain, I'm going to wipe away all your sins, all that things that you feel so bad about that you did. I'm going to wipe that away. And I'm not going to expect any payment from you. I'm going to give you a gift. I'm giving you a second chance. An undeserving, unconditional, selfless gift. A second chance. And that is by me hanging on the cross and dying that way. And it's not just a human being that died on the cross there. It is the son of the creator that died for me on the cross. That's a really big deal. While I was very ignorant and arrogant, he went ahead without knowing whether I'm going to turn or not. And he, he, he handed himself over voluntary to be crucified on the cross. Wow, that, that is really deep. That is intense. And that is that hit home for me. That is why the cross is the wisdom of God. Because it touches you so deeply that you are motivated to do whatever you need to do. And as long as you stay close to the cross as a disciple of Jesus Christ, you will not struggle to do the things you need to do as a Christian. Because you will have that power to do everything that you need to do and want to do as a Christian. And I don't know how you see yourself. And I don't know if you see yourself... As someone that took part in the crucifixion as one of those wicked men but unless we don't see ourselves that way we will just be religious people unless we are broken at the cross we will not receive God's power but when we are broken we receive God's power and that is what that scripture is all about go and read it out meditate meditate on it this is what will keep you faithful for your whole walk as a Christian so I'm today motivated by this power of God. But the world do not understand it. People ask me, why are you a Christian? And they just don't understand it. They don't understand the crucifixion. I've never humbled themselves and identified what, what happened there at the cross. 
I've got a friend at the university and he's busy reading the Bible with one of the philosophy students, uh, which are really interested in Christianity. He, he didn't grow up with the Bible, so it's all interesting to him. So he's reading once a week with his friend the Bible and he's like, really nice stuff. But the bottom line is he will not really become a Christian or a disciple of Jesus Christ unless he sees himself as one of those that also took up the hammer and the nail and nailed that through Jesus' hands on the cross. He will just keep he will just remain a philosopher because he's not getting the real message of the cross. How do you think that Paul and, and Peter stay so motivated, live so boldly? Those ordinary men is because they understood the cross, because something really deep happened in their life, and they were motivated by that. What motivates you to go on church to Sunday? What motivates you to be a Christian? What motivates you to share your faith? What motivates you to read your Bible, to pray, to help others? Is it the right thing to do? Is it just being part of the tradition? Because people that don't know God also do good things. So what motivates you? What makes you bolder and different than other people? Is it the cross or is it just being religious? Is Jesus your best friend? Are you really excited about him? Do you see yourself that he, he forgave you your sins on the cross? You know, or, or uh, you know, where, where do you stand on this? You know, unless we don't see ourselves this way, we are simply religious and we are like the Pharisees. If we are motivated by superstition or wisdom, like the Greeks, we will, we will not grow and be disciples of Jesus Christ the way that he intended us to be. The key to my salvation and your salvation is for us to be connected with the cross, mind, heart, and soul. Where are you at? And I want to encourage you to find it because if you seek this out, God will give it to you. But sometimes you have to dig deeper because sometimes our hearts has become hard and and it's not soft anymore and we full of defensiveness and we, we don't want to acknowledge the fact that we were there and we don't want to acknowledge our sin. We don't see ourselves as wicked. We just, we just, the world is hard on us up. And, and it's just that you will, you got to break down that hard heart and the walls and go to God and say, God, give me a new heart. Help me to think differently about the cross because that is the only way that you will live a full life and how I managed to live a full life in Christ. And I need to keep on working at it. Sometimes it goes better and sometimes I forgot about the cross. Then I need to get close to it again. And it's a, it's a walk of me just to keep on staying close to the cross, and close to God. And when you find this one day, you will be filled with everlasting joy and hope for others. You will never look back again and you will be so happy as a disciple of Jesus Christ. My name is Stan from Vake and I am a disciple of Jesus Christ.